okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. So please ignore the hair, the hair is really out of control today. We are going to look at two more questions. So we are going to look at a finance solver question and then we're going to look at a normal distribution question. You will need your GDC for both these questions. The graphical display calculator is so important for this exam, so please have it ready. Enjoy. Okay, and on to question six. So we're hurtling through this mock exam revision paper for IBSL applications. Isabella and Charlotte both received 80,000 Australian dollars on the 18th birthday to invest for later in their life. Isabella deposits her 80,000 Australian dollars into a bank account that pays a nominal annual interest rate of X percent. This must be what we're looking for, compounded monthly. Notice in these questions on the new IB AISL paper, they often put the compounding in bold. So when you go through using your finance solver, you know what to press and what to focus on. So the amount in the bank account after six years will be 100,000 Australian dollars find the nominal annual interest rate correct to two decimal places. You do need to read the question so you know what accuracy you need to round in. The way I do these questions is I write down the information I'm given. So my present value, so the money I have at the moment is $80,000. So that comes from here. The final value, so where I want it to get to after putting it in the bank account is 100 thousand dollars. The number of years it will take will be six because we're told that's in the question. Our compounding, so how many times is the interest compounded? Well, that's monthly, so let's think how many months are there in a year? Well, there are 12. So these are the key bits of information that we're looking for. The interest rate is what we're looking for, so I'm going to put that there as a question mark. Once I've written down the key information from the question, I've really extracted that from the question, now I can use my finance solver. So I'm going to keep this here, but you can also see my GDC over here as well. We're going to go to the normal calculator view, we go to menu, we go to finance, and we go to finance solver. And here we have a list of options. Now the great thing about the TI Inspire is it actually tells you what these two, these things stand for. So N, for example, stands for the number of payments, in this case the number of years, because a payment is made every year. So that's going to be 6. Interest rate we do not know, so we're going to leave that blank. Now the present value, now we always have to remember with these finance solver questions, we need to put the present value as a negative number. So we need to make sure that at least one of present value or final value is negative. So the present value is minus 80,000. Anything that we haven't written down, we leave as default. So we're going to leave this as zero. This would be for a loan, for example, if you're making monthly payments. The final value is going to be 100,000, so we put that in. Uh, PPY we're going to leave alone, because it's not anything we've written down. CY, however, is going to be 12, because there are 12 months in the year, and that's what we're compounding. Once you've filled in everything, then you go to the thing that you want, which is the interest rate, and just press the Enter button, and you'll get the interest of 3.7248. So let's go back to our slide. So for question A, 3.7248. Dot, 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 just to show the examiner that you have worked this out. So our interest rate, out of time, our interest rate is going to be 3.72% to two decimal places. Must read the question so you put it to the accuracy that you want. So key things in this question, we need to write down the information we know put down a question mark for what we want to find, insert it in one at a time, and then press enter for the thing that we need. Good, good. Quite nice for three marks. Let's carry on. So part B, uh, Charlotte himself, uh, herself uses 80,000 Australian dollars to buy a house that increases in value at a rate of 3% a year. We need to find the house price after six years. This is a standard, um, essentially a compound interest question. So our present value 
in this case is 80,000. Our final value is what we want to find, so we want to find the house price, so we put that as a question mark. N will still stay at 6. This time we do know the interest rate because we're told in the question that's 3% per year. So we put I as 3. Uh, compounding. There is no compounding effect here, notice. So we're just going to put that as 1. So we keep that as standard. Now we know all the information. We now put it into our GDC. So keep this. Let's put this information in. 6 stays the same. Our interest rate, we do know at this point, this is going to be 3. Minus 80,000 stays the same. This one we do not know, so we're going to put that blank. We need to change our compounding to 1. And now we press Enter, where we have final value. So we click on that, and then we get the answer of 95,524.18 cents. So we're going to write that down. And this is in dollars. So this is going to be our answer. Now, the examiner may want you to put it as standard, which is three significant figures. So if they do want it as standard, then to three significant figures, this will be 95,500. Generally, with money, I would write it in dollars and cents, but they may want it there, so why not give them the answer there as well? Okay, so there's our two answers. Notice they have also rounded in the mark scheme to three significant figures. That should be something that you get used to. Alternatively, you could always use the formula. There is a formula given on the formula sheet to work these things out. But this is where your GDC really does pay off. Okay, It's a really, really, really useful tool to make sure that you've got a good understanding of the questions. Okay, and on to question seven. So this one is going to be a normal distribution question. So as soon as we see this phrase here, normally distributed in the question, we know we're going to be using our GDC and working with the normal distribution. So the daily number of visitors to Hagia Sophia Museum, assuming that's in Istanbul, in June, is normally distributed with mean of 5,000. This is worth labelling. And a standard deviation of 750 people. So our mu for this question is going to be 5,000, which corresponds to how we're going to use the calculator. And our sigma is going to be 750. Okay, so we want to calculate the probability that the number of visitors on a randomly chosen day in June is more than 4,000. So what's often helpful with these questions is to draw a sketch of your normal distribution, which is a bell curve, like so, where this is going to be at 5,000, just to get an idea of exactly what you're looking for. So in this case, what we're looking for is more than 5,000, so notice question here, more than. So 4,000 would be on the left-hand side of the mean. So it would be basically here. Okay, it only has to be a sketch. And so what the question wants us to do is actually work out this area under the curve here. So let's go through this. Uh, because we're looking for more than, if you have a more than or less than question, you're going to be using norm CDF. If you're looking for a specific value, then you want to do norm PDF. And we'll talk about part C working backwards with inverse norm. So for question A, let's go back to our GDC. And we're going to go to menu, statistics, distributions. And because we've got a more than question, we're going to use normal CDF. And now we just need to decide the bounds that we're looking for. Well, the lowest bound is 4,000. That's the bottom part. Okay, of the area that we're looking for. The upper bound is going to go off to infinity. So the general way I do this is just write a really big number. So I'm going to write a million uh, because when it gets to that uh, part, it's going to get really, really, really small. Uh, mu is going to be 5,000, like we just identified, and our sigma, our standard deviation will be 750. We click the OK button, like so, and then we read off the decimal that we're given. 
Okay, now probabilities can be written in decimals, of course, so we can just write this decimal down. So if I get my draw function out, so the probability will be equal to 0 0.9087.89. And if we round this to three significant figures, which is all standard, be careful with your rounding here, it'll be 0 0.9087. Zero nine two three S F like so. So we've got our answer, the probability is zero point nine zero nine. For question B, we want to find the expected number of days in June. So before we even start the question, we think okay, how many days are in June? Well thirty thirty days have September, April. June and November, so it's going to be 30. Useful thing to know that June's got 30 days. During where the number of visitors will be less than 4,000 people. So what we've worked out in part A is more than 4,000 people for the probability. So to work out the probability of less than, I'm going to write it in words, so less than 4,000. Well, we know the probabilities always add up to 1, so we can just do 1 minus 0 0.909, or the unrounded equivalent. If we do that and actually minus this away, we're going to get 0 0.091. So instead of having to use the calculator again and use norm CDF, we can actually use the previous answer that we had, 0 0.091. And then, to work out the expected number of days... So I'm going to put E days. We know there are 30 days in June. So then we just do 30 times 0 0.091 and just multiply the two things together. If we do that, we get then 2.73 days, just like on the mark scheme there. Um, in this question, again, I'd always stick to 3SF as a rule, even though we're working in days, still keep it to 3SF just so you've got the most accurate answer for the question. Now, this is a great normal distribution question because it covers a lot of typical topics for normal distribution. We've looked at norm CDF and working with that with expected um, days. Now, on this question, on a randomly chosen day in June, the probability that the number of visitors is less than n people is 0 0.25. We need to find the value of n. This means we're working backwards to what we've done before. So if I draw another sketch of my normal distribution, what the question is asking is, if I draw a random line where this is n, and I don't know what this is yet, I need to find such a value for n, such that if I shade this in, this shaded area is equal to 0 0.25. Essentially, we're working backwards to what we've done before. And as soon as you think working backwards, you need to think the word inverse. And this is the third function that we can use on our GDC. So we go to our GDC, we go to menu, we go to statistics, or probability, distributions, inverse normal, and then we type in the area under the graph, which is 0 0.25, our probability. Our mean and our standard deviation stay as before, 5,750. We press OK, and then we generate our answer, which is 4,494.13. So we just write that down. Okay, and again, I would normally, well, shouldn't use the word normally in a normal distribution question. I'm going to write this down to three significant figures. So this would be 4,490. Now, as a SLAI pupil, if you get a question like this for six marks, you should be very, very happy with this kind of question. It's very standard. You're using the standard functions on your GDC, and you need to make sure you know how that works in order to get all six marks on this question. If you'd like to look at the mark scheme, you can see it here. This is the first question. 
And then here is the last two parts as well. Right, hope you enjoyed the video and then please like, please subscribe. That really goes a long way to support the channel. Particularly let me know if you want this kind of content with the IBSL applications course or perhaps you'd like an IBSL analysis paper instead. All right, see you on the next video.